So, in my last video, I've been waxing lyrical about Schöneberg and uh, what it's got to offer, what hidden little gems. But there's one gem that I haven't mentioned yet, and I am gonna go there now to show you. Um, it is... <laughs> Don't laugh now, but um, because of the football, it's been really, really busy in town and very, very loud. And I want a peaceful night. So I'm going to show you what Schöneberg has on offer as well. And it is... It's my all the little gems that uh, Schöneberg has to offer and um, I forgot one, one big one and I'm on my way to it now and I want to show you. Now because of the footy, the football, the soccer, whatever you call it, Euro 24, uh, Berlin city centre has been really really loud and I want a quiet night and I have just the perfect place to do that. And it's in Schöneberg, believe it or not. I don't have to leave my area. It is, ta-da, it's Ikea. Yes, there's an Ikea in, in Schöneberg. And look at it, it's so empty. It's perfect for one nice quiet night. Really looking forward to it. And <laughs> it's taking Stealth Living or whatever, you know, to the next level. This is the place for tonight. This is where I'll be able to sleep peacefully. Look how, how bloody empty it is. Sun's out, no people, perfect. That's what I want one night at IKEA. Isn't that just perfect van living story? kind of a running joke in my family really that um, I don't like Ikea look at me now but um, I'm just trying to look in my van if there's anything that comes from Ikea honestly um, it's not that I'm anti Ikea it's just such a mass production of stuff that I think where's the originality I have a friend I'm not gonna name their names but when you walk into the living room it just looks like an IKEA showroom piece, really. And I think, like, where's your, where's your personality? Where's your input? So, looking around Dean, I have to admit, I think apart from the spice racks, which every van has, I have spice racks from IKEA. So there you go. I think that's about the only thing I can think of, really. So. Anyway, last video I left you in Schöneberg um, and uh, believe it or not, this IKEA, this parking lot, my uh, place to sleep tonight is also part of the Schöneberg area. Now, let's talk about Berlin because of course Berlin is more than just uh, Schöneberg. I just happen to be in one of those little tiny corners in West Berlin or what is called you know, what is the old West Berlin? Now, I think people always compare Berlin, Paris and London as the three trendy capitals of Europe. And London, I think, has got about like 10 million inhabitants. Probably Paris has got 11 million. And then trailing behind is Berlin with three and a half. And to be quite honest, you notice that when you're in town. I mean, apart from the touristy areas, Berlin still feels very, very empty. It feels very, very green. I've, I've touched upon that in my last video. If you haven't seen it, it's up there somewhere. But yes, it's very, very quiet. And Sundays are really dead. Okay, there's football going on this weekend, so it's not really dead. But normally, Sundays are really, really quiet. You can actually walk down the streets and just be the only person in the street. You can be at the bakery and just think like, where is everybody on a Sunday morning?
Last time I left you at Nollendorf Straße, where Christopher Isherwood lived during the roaring 20s and 30s. And I will go back to that a bit later on in the video. But um, I want to take you now from Nollendorf Platz via Wittenberg Platz past the KDW, the famous department store. KDW, it's an acronym for Kaufhof des Westens, you know, the department store of the West. kind of built in the 1950s as, as a product of uh, you know like the west the west has won the war and now we're the prosperous city with uh, lots of money flowing and this department store which it's seven floors was really really the epitome of that and then we walk down the Kurfürstendamm which is of course the the, the very famous shopping street in Berlin, in West Berlin, not East Berlin, but in West Berlin. And then we end up at the Gedächtniskirche, which is a monument of its own right, because in the restoration they decided to actually restore it with half the tower still in ruins and keeping it in ruins just to commemorate the bombing in the Second World War. Now, why am I taking you to Gedächtniskirche? Well, because when we're talking about Berlin, we're always talking about the wars. And I just want to um, show you a little memorial at the back, around the corner from this uh, Gedächtniskirche, from this, this, this church. It's called Breitscheidplatz. In the winter of 2016, as usual, as per usual, there was a Christmas market here. And like every year it was it's not the most pretty christmas uh, market but it's it's always around this church and it, it's nice to go to and usually tourists because this is the center of the west berlin shopping area a lot of tourists go there now on this specific night in 2016 an islamist decided to ram his full truck into the crowd at the Christmas market, resulting in lots of casualties and 13 deaths. Breaking out of Berlin, the Berlin mayor Michael Mueller has just reported the situation is now under control. Nine people confirmed dead, 50 people confirmed injured after a large truck crashed into a shopping market, a Christmas shopping market outside the Kaiser Wilhelm Church on the fashionable west side of Berlin. There were two people, according to local reports and authorities, inside the truck when it did the crashing. Both escaped the scene since the driver has been captured by authorities and another person who is believed to have been in the front of that truck, according to local media, not the authorities, has been shot and killed. The local media report there were warnings of a possible attack on a Christmas market prior to today. It was definitely deliberate. Uh, these, this truck came onto the scene, according to multiple witnesses, at approximately 40 miles per hour, crashed through the Christmas stands on site, then went into a road. Now, the reason I'm pointing this out, because it's probably not in all the, uh, you know, tourist guides, but I think you should go and visit the memorial because it's very inconspicuous. It's just this tiny little golden line 
on the floor in the pavement. It's a jaggedy line, pro probably representing the division in uh, our country or in our uh, communities or in our society. And on the steps toward the church, you will find the names of the 13 casualties of this terrorist attack. Like I said, it's, it's a moment in time in modern history that probably is not mentioned all the time. And I thought I'd highlight that in this video, just because otherwise it doesn't get a lot of mention. It's called Breitscheidplatz. Now, if our starting point is uh, Nollendorf U-Bahn Station, you know, the underground of Nollendorf Platz, I took you to the straight onwards towards the Gedächtniskirche, down the shopping mall and down the shopping road Kuhfürstendamm. Uh, but if you turn left on a week and on a Saturday, I think you should go to Winterfeldplatz, which is the local, you know, farmer's market I would call it. That's a really great place to go and visit a local produce, talk to some really nice people. I've been going there for years and I've made some friends along the way so um, you know I'm leaving you with some impressions of that market. I think you should really go and visit it while you're in Berlin on a Saturday. to go back to Marlene Dietrich which um, I touched upon in my last video. Now Marlene Dietrich is, uh, was a bit of a trailblazer when it comes to the word gender bending uh, that people will understand but um, we're talking 30s here we're still talking women dry dressing like women with skirts and you know. Marlene Dietrich was one of those first women that wore a suit and pants or trousers so in that respect, she was kind of a trailblazer. She kind of broke that gender t stereotype of what a woman is supposed to look like. Which brings us back to, you know, Schoenberg in the 20s and in the 30s. It was kind of a hedonistic place. Cabaret culture flourished and the acts were pushing boundaries and social norms. With men pretending to be women, women pretending to be men. 
But beneath all that glitz and glam, because that's what cabaret is all about, of course, something quite revolutionary was happening. Christopher Isherwood captured the electric spirit of Schoenberg in his Berlin diaries. He documented the lives of performers and artists and everyday people, many of whom were openly gay or experimenting with their sexuality. In a time when homosexuality was illegal or heavily frowned upon, Schoenberg offered a rare sense of acceptance, which makes it resonate to like the Castro area or the village in New York. Very, very parallel universes. That revolution you can still see today because this area where all this was happening, being Germany and being Schoenberg, it was all met with kind of, was met with, with tolerance to be quite honest. And that tolerance has now reached 2000, well, has reached the new millennium because this area that we are in now at the moment is the gay area. Like, um, like San Francisco has its Castro area, New York has its village area, and uh, in Paris you would have Le Marais, and in London you would have Old Compton Street and Soho area. Well, in Berlin you've got your Schöneberg area with the trailblazers of the people as portrayed in Cabaret the Musical or by Melina Dietrich. This has now become the gay area, although a guy of my generation calls it a gay area, but let's be honest, it's now the LGBTQI and all those, all those letters, but um, it, let's keep it simple and just call it the gay area, the LGB area. In 1939, Christopher Isherwood published his uh, novel, Goodbye to Berlin. I think that is an apt title to end this video. It's goodbye to Berlin from me to you. And I'll see you on the road next week. Take care for now. Oh, uh, my laundry's ready. So uh, time to pick up the laundry and then I'm out of here.